Joel Lanning wasn't a bad quarterback. In two seasons, he had thrown for 19 touchdowns and run for 15 more. The guy was a decent starting quarterback in the Big 12 Conference. But Matt Campbell thought he could be something more at a different position, and he was right. Think about this. Lanning was 100% healthy for Iowa State's season-ending game against West Virginia last November. He entered that game for one play, which would have been Iowa State's only offensive touchdown. He keeps it. Lanning with a flag coming in, moving the pile, and Lanning bulldozes his way in. But was called back by a penalty, and that was it. Lanning never returned to the field. Are you surprised, Ben, by the lack of Joel Lanning that we've seen? We've seen him for one play, one carry, that play, a touchdown run by Lanning, but Correct. it was whistled yep. off because of a couple of penalties. You know, I really am. That day, that moment, officially not playing a single down in the final game of the season was the lowest of lows for Joel Lanning. Now who, including Lanning, could have possibly dreamed that one year later, Lanning would be a first team All-American middle linebacker. Um, you know, the next day, Coach Campbell called me to the office, you know, wanted to make sure I was doing all right and asked where my head was, things like that. And uh, I was like, yeah, I just don't really know what I want to do. Because um, at some point I was thinking I'd, I'd rather just be done playing ball than, you know, try to transfer somewhere and go play quarterback and earn credibility within another program when I, you know, did everything I thought I possibly could, you know, for this program. And, you know, I just, I just didn't want to leave. And, uh, but I, I didn't want to come back for my senior year to play five snaps a game either. You know, I, I told him that and completely understood. Two weeks before spring ball had started, he called me in his office and said, hey, uh, we want to try you out at uh, my linebacker. And, uh, you know, when he said that, I was just, all right, sweet. The humility that Joel came into both of those meetings with, you know, I, I think easily his intent in those meetings certainly could have been a different attitude towards it. Frustration, disappointment, and maybe there was a tinge of that, but I think his intent on helping this football team and this football program be the best he can be and get on the field. I don't know if I've ever been around a more humble, more genuine young man in you know, somebody that had so much pride about Iowa State and becoming the best he could be to help Iowa State become the best they could be. I mean, at first I was just kind of like, all right, I haven't played since eighth grade, so we'll see how that goes. But, uh, you know, I mean, I kind of did buy in right away. I mean, obviously they're not going to put me somewhere that, like, I have no chance of having success at. Joel and I hit it off from the day that I got here. I, I love this work ethic. I love the way he approached football. Um, and it's why I had so much confidence in wherever he was playing. I loved having Joel Lanning on the football field. And, you know, I, I think the thing that I really appreciate about him is him believing in me. You know, they obviously saw what I was doing uh, made me a physical enough person to be able to make the transition. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I trusted them 100% with what they were doing. That moment when Lanning, without hesitation, jumped at the chance to do what was best for the team set a tone for the Iowa State locker room that can't accurately be described unless you're part of that locker room. It's priceless. Uh, you can't put a figure on it. You, you, you really don't understand it unless you've been in this game or in businesses a long time. For people to sacrifice everything they know, what makes them comfortable, what's made them successful for the betterment of a team to make it successful, uh, is absolutely priceless and, and I felt like at the time when that happened uh, it would be a defining moment for our team. Uh, that was my own personal feeling. I, I've just never seen anybody do such a thing and um, I give them a lot of credit for what has happened with the chemistry of this team. Everybody was like okay it's like for example if, if Joel's 15 minutes early in the meeting then I should be 15 minutes early too. You know I personally have a lot of admiration for him uh, because he defines, I think, what everything that, that Coach Campbell was talking about. And having the ability to fight through adversity. Um, having the ability when your number's called to, to go make a spectacular play and to do things right every day. I just think everyone has bought into what these guys have done, um, not just me. I mean, awesome staff, you know, they're players first program here. I mean, they're doing everything and everything they can for you and uh, I mean, so only thing to do was give it in return and you know do what I can for these guys. Understatement and it wasn't just the Iowa State players and coaches who expressed their appreciation for what Lanning did. Mike Gundy sent him a nice letter mid-season. Others have followed suit. 
Joel was runner-up for the Horning Award and was named by Kirk Herbstreet as the best throwback player in college football. But best of all, the Football Writers Association of America, authors of one of the most respected All-American teams, voted Joel Lanning first team linebacker. I got a text from Coach White saying, hey, congrats, man, it's awesome. Um, and I just told him, I was like, thank you. I mean, I couldn't do it without you guys. I mean, it's really, really all, all, all coaching, honestly, and with my teammates helping me out as well, getting me to where I need to be. I mean, there's no way I could have done it by myself. I um, mean, yeah, I'm athletic enough to make a transition, but to do the right things and, you know, watch film the way I did and do all that, that's Coach Bite. That's, uh, you know, Coach Haycock and the whole defensive staff. And, um, my teammates, you know, bringing me in, watching extra film and spring ball when I was making the transition. Coach Veit helped him out a lot too, and a lot of the players like Willie Harvey and um, Marcel Spears, those guys, you know, we helped him out and helped him succeed, but Coach Veit played a huge part in that too because, you know, he had, had learned how to tackle pretty much, so. Oh, he learned how to tackle, finished second in the Big 12, in fact. And yes, Joel should thank his coaches and teammates for helping him along. But man, this just doesn't happen at an all-American level without something special burning inside you. I mean, he was always bugging Coach Veit about coming and pulling Coach Veit out of meetings to come watch film from like a practice before, even if it was the smallest detail that we didn't know where, where we might fit on this certain play. He was always asking about it. It's not like he just said, Oh, whatever, I'm just going to roll with it. There is an elite one to maybe as good as anybody I've seen to play this sport at the highest level he can play it. Um, and it was the same thing at quarterback. That never wavered. It was never good enough. You know, if he had 20 tackles in one game, he didn't care about that. It was that he missed four tackles. I've got two sons. I hope they love football like Joe Lanning loves football. And, you know, he is a guy that absolutely loves to come into this environment and absolutely loves to step on that field every day and really compete to be the best he can be and there's a sincere difference between loving football and loving to compete to be the best you can be that's what makes Joel really special. Ranking second in the Big 12 in tackles is nice being the first player in 11 seasons to record a sack an interception a fumble recovery a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown that's nice too. Recording 20 tackles in a game one week, then being named National Defensive Player of the Week the next week, playing almost 1,000 snaps between offense, defense, and special teams, converting five of five third down rushes and four of four fourth down rushes, being the only known player in modern college football to rush for five touchdowns in one game and record 20 tackles in another. It's legendary stuff. It's tangible stuff. But trust me, it's the intangible stuff that Joel Lanning brought to the Iowa State football program that will leave an impact long after this season. It's like Coach Haycock says a lot, and a lot of the coaches say this, and said leadership starts in small groups. I think once, you know, everybody, you know, you got small groups here and there, I think Joel was ever, he was the guy that brought all those small groups together. I've been through everything possibly, coaching changes, not having success on the field, pretty much getting benched, uh, it's not leaving the field. Uh, it's completely different. Uh, I mean, it's, it's awesome. We'd go through all the plays with them. Hey, are you good with these? And, oh yeah, that's all you want me to do? It's like, well, I mean, you've played 900 plays in the last two weeks. I mean, it's, it's kind of asking a lot. Oh no, I can do that. You gonna let me throw it? You know? Yeah, Joel. And, uh, I, I just admire the fearless nature that he has, you know. Um, he threw a touchdown to, to Allen in the Oklahoma State game and uh, I'm not quite sure he exactly knew what the signals were uh, or what the play was. I don't really know if Allen did either, but Joel told me he was going to throw it no matter what. So, uh, <laughs> you know, he, he's just a, he, he does, he, he makes your day a little bit better. There's, I don't know how many million books written on leadership, uh, written on uh, self-help, motivation. Uh, that guy is uh, all of those books. Uh, he's everything that people describe in those books, all the ones I've ever read, that we all have read. Uh, he's that person. Honestly, couldn't ask for a better way to go out in my senior year. I think we kind of changed the program around as a senior class, and you know that's kind of what we came here to do. You know, change the program around, compete for championships, and you know at the end of the year, coach always says, "Did we reach our full potential?" And uh, you know, I. I think we're reaching our full potential. It really changed the whole direction of Iowa State football, in, in my honest opinion. You know, to 
for the young guys to watch this guy who things maybe didn't go the way he wanted it. He was facing some adversity and a lot of times in our society today, it's so easy to say, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna quit or I'm gonna go somewhere else. And you know, instead here's a guy that looked it right in the eye and he attacked it. And then the, the reaping the rewards of that, facing that adversity and for these young guys in our program to see that and to watch that. I think it's it's exactly what you want to build a foundation of a pro football program on is when things get tough you gotta you gotta look it in the eye and you gotta you gotta attack it and that's what Joel Lanning did and forever this program will be grateful for it because it has laid a firm foundation to the future of Iowa State football. What more could you ask? Don't answer that. Joel Lanning would take you seriously. For Cyclones.tv, I'm John Walters. Thank you.